In this video, four friends and I test our bikepacking gear on the Airline State Park Trail. It's a trial run for our upcoming nine-day adventure from D.C. to Pittsburgh. Are you videotaping this? Today we're doing a little bit of a test ride. The five of us are going to uh, camp here at uh, Mashamoquit Brook State Park overnight tonight and set up all of our bikepacking gear um, when we get back from the ride. So we're starting here. We're going to go to... Uh, uh, the state line, triple state line marker in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Hey, what's the name of this place, John? Mashamoquit Brook State Park, Mike. Yeah. Am I saying it right? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll have to ask somebody if I'm saying it right. Mike's trying to bust my chops. After checking in with park staff, I was told the correct pronunciation is Mashamoquit. We're going to be leaving here maybe doing about 40 miles round trip, uh, maybe grabbing some lunch in nearby town of Putnam. Coming back here, we got some new to bike packing friends with us today, Greg and Steve. This is my current setup. Got some new bags and a new bike since last time. So I got an Ortlieb front bag, which is waterproof. I have my same Blackburn side bags set up on my Trek checkpoint. Same snack bag, new mid-loader bag. This bag is actually bolted into the frame. Um, and then I put a rack, I bought a rack to go along with this bike. And I've got a Sea to Summit waterproof bag with volet straps um, instead of the rear seat bag, which I think will work out better for me this time. On the far side, um, I still have the uh, cup holder, which I will probably use to stow the uh, video camera. Yeah. Make it easy to get in and out. I'll probably do a full gear video of exactly what's in what bag, but I'm kind of figuring it out right now. And 52. 52 pounds for Steve. 49, uh, well, 50. All right, 50 pounds for Mike. 51. 51 pounds, all right. 45. 48. All right, Mike, you're in charge of the actual ride today. Objective is to reach the Mass RI Connecticut Tri-State Marker. Uh, if we make it that far, uh, there's definitely like a, a rough trail from the airline to the marker. It's, it's three tenths of a mile. We might just be able to leave the bikes and hike there. This map provides an overview of day one. You'll find a link to my All Trails GPS recording in the description below. We followed paved roads to the Airline State Park Trail, which is about one and three quarter miles from the campground. This is the start of our eastward journey to the Tri-State Marker on the Airline State Park Trail. As you'll see in this video, the state of Connecticut has put considerable amount of money into constructing steel bridges over and concrete culverts under major roads, greatly enhancing the trail safety. Hopefully the state will continue to improve the trail surface in the years to come. Years ago, this was uh, probably just a blocked up road. So far, the ride has been pretty good, a little bit chunky, but uh, none of these culverts were here last time I came through, which might have been in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. Town Farm, this is where the old funny farm was, I think. Yeah, there's a state sanatorium in this area, I believe. past Town Farm Road and I would say the trail conditions have uh, taken a slight turn for the worse but they're still pretty decent just a lot of I don't know, call mud and swerving back and forth to avoid uh, rocks and things but not too bad. Uh, we're on high fill here as we're approaching the former railroad bridge across the Quinnebog River and uh, this place was a uh, victim of the 1955 hurricane and the bridge got wiped out and that's kind of what put the end of this through route between uh, New York and Boston. 
and they never rebuilt the bridge. Definitely go over the handlebars type territory. Yeah, I don't have my uh, mountain shoes on. I got my, no, my city them. biking shoes. This bridge was washed out in the 1955 flooding that resulted from Hurricane Diane. The railroad never rebuilt it. So you see straight ahead? That's how high the bridge would have been. The Putnam River Trail follows the east bank of the Quinnebog River through town. We followed it south a short distance to the farmer's market. The market is open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. June through October. And 2024 was its 14th season. Mike loves to stop at farmer's markets. Heading north, we pass the airline bridge we just crossed and continue through the town of Putnam. After a few miles of riding on the road, we've returned to the airline trail. Back on the rail trail here in Thompson, heading towards the Massachusetts and Rhode Island state line. Steve for grabbing some video of me from time to time. It certainly helped keep things moving. at East Thompson, the site of the great four train wreck of 1891. There are six historical placards describing the crash and other related railroad history. The signs are courtesy of the Thompson Historical Society and I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to learn more. This fascinating bridge was built to allow cattle to cross the track safely. Many farms were bisected by the railroads and cattle bridges or cattle passes were built as part of the negotiations for putting a railroad through the farmer's property. Just beyond the cattle bridge we pass over a stone arch culvert. You can't see it from above but there's a short trail that takes you to the scenic view of the rocky brook and the culvert. state marker. This is definitely not a trail that's bike friendly. If you want to do this, make sure you lock your bikes up like we did. After hiking to the tri-state marker, it was time to head back to Putnam for some well-deserved lunch. The video doesn't show it very well, but Ian had a broken spoke and his rear wheel was wobbling. We stopped at Deary Brothers, which originally opened in 1937 as an ice cream stand. As you can see, this is a popular spot and we enjoyed our meals. 
did 35 miles on the day and averaged 9.1 miles per hour. Back at camp, we set up our tents and had dinner. After a brief but heavy rain, we retreated to this awesome sunset. All right, we're packed up. Leaving the campground here at Wolf Den State. We're leaving Wolf Den here. Mashem Oakwit. Mashik. How do we say that? Mashik. Massaquat. I don't know how to say it. We're leaving the park. Say it again, Mike. Mash the bucket. Take care, Ian. Get that spoke fixed, man. Yeah. Good time. On day two, we once again started from the Pomfret Trailhead and this time headed south to the James L. Goodwin State Forest. They have a really cool trail head here at the Pomfret Station. That structure is not the train station, but it's where the train station used to be. That station burned down. There's a whole history placard with uh, pictures of some of the area stations in there. That's definitely worth checking out. It was another beautiful day with comfortable temperatures. We had a wet night last night, which meant packing up our wet tent. Um, not always going to be fun, but definitely a reality. When you're bike packing, sometimes you got to pack up, even if it doesn't rain, a moist tent. Good morning. Cows? was our turnaround point. We rode 26 miles on day two and completed 61 miles in total for the weekend. Was this practice trip enough to help us be successful on our upcoming trip from DC to Pittsburgh? Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our DC to Pittsburgh journey.